can your T cells become exhausted because of too much COVID-19 or too many vaccines? Hey there everyone, this is Dr. Mikhail Arashik of Mirror Genomics and today's video's topic dedicated to COVID-19 vaccines is about T cell exhaustion. This is a topic that was selected by you, the audience, so thank you very much to everyone who has voted to select this topic. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that we have another COVID-19 Q&A event coming up. So please stay till the end of the video to find out how you can get free tickets to that. All right, so what is T-cell exha exhaustion? First of all, there are many different types of T-cells. So the type of T-cells we're going to be discussing in this video are killer T-cells. These are also known as cytotoxic T-cells or effector T-cells. And the role of these cells is basically to clean up all of the infected cells in your body or cells that are no longer acting normally such as cancer cells so these killer T cells play a very important role so what happens when they become exhausted basically they lose their ability to do their proper function and this happens when such killer T cells become exposed too often to an antigen meaning what they're supposed to be recognizing so in the context of SARS-CoV-2 that would be spike protein so the spike protein antigen and when killer T cells become exhausted what happens there their molecular profile inside those cells changes and what ends up happening they start producing specific molecules these are called these are called inhibitory receptors and these inhibitory receptors start showing up on the cell surface of these cells. And the take home message is basically that the more of those inhibitory receptors that are showing up on their cell surface, the less likely such cells are going to be doing their proper functions. And if they cross a certain threshold, meaning they have too many of them, they can even be destined to die. They can be destined to commit suicide or apoptosis and they will be removed from circulation. So I'll mention one such inhibitory receptor. There's many different kinds and it's PD-1. The reason why is because PD-1 stands for Program Death 1. And you can imagine that with such a name, such, such cell that re shows, shows up with this type of receptor on their cell surface probably is going to be in some sort of a trouble. So in the end, when these program death one receptors are being encountered it changes what happens inside the cell so normal killer t cells they need a lot of energy in order to execute their function so as a consequence killer t cells activate glycolysis that's basically breakdown of sugar in order to produce energy and if you have too many of those program death one receptors or inhibitory receptors on a cell surface that glycolysis gets shut down and as a consequence of that what ends up happening is that the mitochondria inside these cells they end up producing energy in a different format and basically it's the mitochondria that become dysregulated they start producing too much reactive oxygen species and they no longer function properly this is in fact referred to as mitochondrial derangement so my apologies to all the mitochondria out there for such a mildly inappropriate name and also this might be one of the reasons why antioxidants can help with maintaining your proper immune function provided that such antioxidants can be targeted to your mitochondria so they can help clean up this kind of mess now what I also wanted to mention in terms of um, in terms of these programmed death one receptors is that some of the cancer cells can interact with these type of receptors and they interact with these receptors to inactivate those killer T cells as well to cause to cause exhaustion of these of these killer T cells and therefore escape being attacked by killer T cells. The reason why I mentioned that is because there are immunotherapies available that will actually block this PD-1 receptor on the surface of killer T cells so that they can no longer be 
encountered by cancer cells. And as a consequence, these killer T cells do not become exhausted by cancer cells. So it's a very interesting way of treating cancer because it's somewhat of an abstract thing. Normally when we think of cancer therapy, we think of treatments that will target cancer cells. Here instead, we are targeting the killer T cells to prevent them from being exhausted by, the, by interaction with the cancer cells that happen to uh, interact with those programmed death one receptors. So very interesting, this all related, which is why I wanted to, to mention this. But there's also another way how you can lead to T cell exhaustion and that's through too many cytokines. Now cytokines are molecules that immune cells use to communicate amongst each other and alter the function of the immune system. There's many different ones and one of the most important ones is called interferon. Interferon cytokine is one of the, one of the more basic or most important cytokines in preventing viral infection and fighting viral infection so it's it's really really necessary but here is here's the fact that if you have too much of it it can also be a problem in that it can lead to t-cell exhaustion so that's another really interesting fact by the way zinc supplements is needed for ensuring that people can have properly activated interferon function if you ever wonder why some people talk about zinc supplementation for your immune system all right, so what about COVID-19 and vaccines in relation, to pro, uh, in relation to T cell exhaustion? So let's start with vaccines. And the answer is no one really knows because it's never been studied yet. Not in relation to, to COVID-19 uh, mRNA injections. It's no one yet there to look at it whether repeated COVID-19 injections could be causing T cell exhaustion. Uh, but there's definitely been calls calls from some scientists that perhaps it could be a problem because of course when you vaccinate you produce spike protein in the circulation and therefore there is a worry that perhaps this could eventually eventually lead to t-cell exhaustion and therefore the question is how many boosters should we take and in what kind of time frame in order for this not to happen because taking this many vac um, injections is not typically normal normally they're there we don't need to take that many and they would uh, we wouldn't be taking so many in such a short time frame so that's still an unanswered question but it's definitely some scientists are mentioning that we should be vigilant uh, about this topic now when it comes to COVID-19 Okay. Hard to get by. When it comes to COVID-19, I think we don't fully yet know the answer to that question. The jury is still out on that because there seems to be conflicting results uh, on this topic. So definitely there's been multiple publications, uh, scientific publications showing that COVID-19 patients who had severe COVID-19 do exhibit hallmarks of t-cell exhaustion especially those who end up in icu but the reason why i say there are conflicting results because i've also read another study that did really really interesting experiment that i wanted to share with you and that was what these authors did they took about 40 patients and what they did is they look how genes are being used inside the t-cells in thousands upon thousands of different cells this technology of sequencing your genetic material is so powerful and so frequently used that these days you can you can investigate individual cells so they looked at, at something like 80,000 different t-cells and they looked at the profiles to start analyzing what these t-cells look like and what did they do? And they looked at the, the based on their profile, they they saw which T cells showed hallmarks of T cell exhaustion. And what these authors proclaimed is that it looked like 
it was the patients with the milder version of COVID-19 that were more likely to exhibit T-cell exhaustion as compared to the patients with severe COVID-19. And they postulated that it might be because those who had severe COVID-19 needed more robust T-cell reaction in order to just survive that, uh, that severe COVID-19. So I would say the jury is still out there as to what really happens in terms of T-cell exhaustion. This is still a fairly new topic. It's therefore, it's, we're still learning how it works. It's only been discovered, the whole concept has only been discovered mere 20 years ago or so. So there's still much to be learned about what, what really happens in the process of T-cell exhaustion. All right, if you manage to stay to this point, then let me tell you about the COVID-19 Q&A that is coming up. First 10 people who will subscribe to our newsletter, we will send you free tickets. The link to the subscription is in the description below. So check it out. Those are a lot of fun. Basically, these are Q&A where the part audience can participate and ask questions. All levels are welcome. So it doesn't matter what kind of knowledge you have. These, these are meant to basically have fun and for all of us to learn and educate ourselves together. Now, if you like this information, please give us a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, share the video, this is how we grow and we are looking forward to seeing you in the next installment of this video, of these video series. Bye everyone.